Okay, hello and welcome to part one of this series. Um, in this video what we're going to be doing is pretty much everything I said previously, which is, um, well, we're going to start by going over the folder structure, and then we're going to get on to the um, reading and writing functions for this part, and then in part two we'll deal with the database export um, thingy, because there is a little bit of extra um, sort of awkwardness we have to deal with there. So, I guess the first thing we should do is get on with the folder structure thing. So, this is the folder that we're working in. We're going to be using this test.php file just to, um, well, test a few things. Um, so that's where we're going to be doing sort of our, I don't know, using the functions we're going to be creating. So that's, that's basically what, what would be normally your page. Anyway, um, so we have this core folder as well. Um, so if we just go into there, you can see that we have two files. One being a file called init.inc.php and one being a folder called inc. Um, so inc, being short for includes, or include, or anything sort of similar to that, um, is a folder that contains any sort of backend library type files. So these are files which only define functions, uh, and which don't actually do anything themselves. Um, and then our init file is one which is included by all of our pages, and what that will do is include any, nece any necessary files from this inc folder, and also um, it will do any sort of initialization setup type stuff so it'll connect to the database it will start the session things like that that you want to happen all the time but that you don't want to duplicate across each page so that's actually where we're going to be starting in terms of coding so let's just open it up in my editor and let's get started so the first thing we want to do is work out the full path to this file itself. And luckily PHP provides the file constant which just contains the full path on the server starting from you know slash for Linux or um, C colon backward slash for Windows users. Obviously depending on what drive you've got it on. Um, so yeah that's quite useful because it always points to the current file um, which means that we can use this to get the full path to this core folder without having to worry about relative file paths and that sort of thing. So it's kind of useful. Um, so what we need to do is use the dir name function on this which just takes off the file part of the name and returns the folder path and we're just going to store that in a variable called core path. Okay, so that's that done. Um, and now we've got that defined, we can use that to include our two backend files, which I don't think I showed you. So let's just do that. Um, in the inc folder, we have two files, csv.inc.php, which is going to deal with our CSV functions. So that's the CSV write and CSV read, or maybe the way around. Um, and we have the users function, which is for part two, really. Um, when we get onto database exporting, we're going to have a function which uh, returns all of the users from the database and we're going to use that with our CSV functions. So you can see that the functions are kind of categorized into well, categories. So you've got the CSV functions and the user functions. Okay, so let's get on with our init file again. What we need to do is just include those two files. So we can do that by using the include function, except we will spell it correctly. There we go. And it's the core path, which is the core folder, and then it's slash the inc folder and then the name of the file. So in this case for us it's csv.inc.php and the other one is users.inc.php in the same folder. So I'm just going to copy this line down to there and change the CSV to users. Now this file itself, the init file, needs to be included in the page. So let's go to our test page and we'll include the file which is in the core folder. Um, like so. And then if we go to our browser and hit reload, we don't get any errors, which is good. That pretty much means that all the files are included as they should be. So the next thing to do is create the two functions to read and write a CSV file. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do this in our CSV backend file. And we're going to create two functions, read CSV and write CSV. And well, let's just define the outline of these two functions first. So we're going to create one function, which is going to be called read CSV. And this is going to take one parameter, which is going to be the file name, file name, like so. 
and we're going to create another function which is going to be called write CSV. This is going to take two parameters, one being the file name and one being the array of rows or lines or you know data to add to the file. And we'll get on to what that's going to look like in a little while. Um, but we'll just call this rows for now. Like so. Okay. So what we'll do now is just add two quick comments to explain what these functions do. So this one reads a CSV file um, returning an array of rows. And this other one um, writes the given array of rows to a CSV file. So essentially the format of array that this first function returns is what's going to go into this second parameter. So we're keeping the format the same. So now all we need to do is deal with reading the file and writing the file obviously and that is done um, using um, well a few file functions. So the first thing we're going to do is define an array called rows like so and this is going to be the sort of array that's going to contain all of our data um, and then at the end of our function we're going to return this array so in between here what we need to do is read the file process each line and store the results in the rows array so to read the file we're going to use a function called file except like spell it properly what this function does is reads a given file name and returns an array with each line of the file in one element. So we'll use our test.csv as an example um, and what we'll do is we'll set rows equal to the file function um, and then we're going to pass in the file name like so. So all this will do is read the file line by line and just to demonstrate what this does let's go to our test page and we'll just come down here and do print underscore r um, read csv test.csv like so. So let's go to our browser and hit reload and you can see that we get this array output and what I'm actually going to do is um, use a header function in our page to tell the browser that this is a plain text file. So we can do that just under here um, and this is just in place of how I normally keep like viewing the page source. Um, this is just to mean I don't have to do that basically. What it'll do is just tell the browser to treat this file as plain text. That's what you can see there. So notice that um, we have each line of the file in an array element, and also that there's a new um, there's a line between each element, and that's because the file function by default will include the new line at the end of the line um, in the line. Um, yeah. So what we can do is stop it doing that by simply going back to our code and as a second parameter to the file function we can pass in the constant file ignore new lines and that will just tell it to not include the line so reload and you can see that those blank lines have got and that's important because it would um, break our um, well it would break the file basically it'd make it not work the format would be wrong so now what we need to do is deal with loading um, not loading, well yeah, loading, processing each line as a CSV file. So we need to loop over this array one line at a time and each time we need to split this array, this line by the comma and get each element separately. Um, so the way we can do that is by using the str get csv function. So let's first deal with looping over the array. So we're going to use a for each loop here, so we'll just do for each the array which is the result of the file function as line so inside this loop here line is each line of the file in turn so what we're going to do here is add something to the rows array and what we're going to be adding is the str get csv function the result of that function of the line variable so if we now go back to our browser again and hit reload once more you can see that we've got an array containing an array itself, so a multi-dimensional array um, and then inside of this innermost array, if you like, so each row has three columns which were, which are the um, things that were separated by the commas so that's pretty much it for reading um, as you can see we've got the um, information into a way that it can be used which is what we were after 
So what we're going to do now is deal with the writing part. So to write a file it is ever so slightly different because there is no sort of two CSV version of this function which is a bit strange because I thought I expected there would be but um, never mind we can use the other one. Um, so there is a function called f put CSV which writes a CS well it creates a CSV formatted line and writes it to a open file pointer. So this is, this is kind of the old method, if you like, of reading and writing files before the file get contents functions were added. But um, you know, it's, it's, it's probably the most efficient way. It's just not as not quite as simple. Anyway, what we'll do is open the file first. So we're going to create a new variable called file, and we're going to use the f open function on the file name, and we need to pass in the mode, which is either read, write, or append. So we want to write to this file. So we just add a w like so. Then what we want to do is loop over the rows array so we're going to be looping over this array, this big array if you like, so we're going to do something for each one of these. So we'll just use a simple for each loop again rows as row and then inside of here we're going to use the f put csv function and we're going to be putting the csv row, line, whatever, into the file that we opened and the data we want to put in is the row array. And that's that done. What we should do finally is just close the file using fclose, like so. Okay, so as a test what we can do is go to our page and we can, instead of printing it out, we'll call it um, data, create a variable containing the rows and then we will write that data um, to another file. So let's call it test2.csv data. And just to sort of show that it is actually working properly and we can manipulate it, what we'll do is add something to the data. So let's add another element, another row, to the end of the data array. So let's add a new user, another player, player, um, another person. Um, so let's call him Mike. His email address can be uh, Mike504054, why not, at Gmail or something. Please don't email this person because, you know, it's a sensible email address. He might exist. Um, and his phone number is zero because I'm lazy. Okay, so let's go to our browser and hit reload. We get a blank page because we didn't have it out by anything. But if we go to our folder and just go back, you can see that this test2.csv file has been created and that's the result of our write CSV function. So we just open this up in my text editor. You can see that we have um, this exact same data as before except we've got this extra row at the end for Mike. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. That means it's working. Um, and you can see that these are the sort of elements that I added to the array for that row. Um, note that the quotes here have been added um, this is just sort of the standard format for CSV files. You're supposed to quote strings that have spaces. For some reason, when I exported the original one, my um, Office thingy didn't do that. But it um, doesn't really matter because it read it anyway. But that's not something you need to worry about because the um, f put CSV function deals with that for you, as does the str get CSV function. So um, yeah, that's not something to be concerned with. And as a file test, what we can do is open this up in my um, uh, office thingy. So we'll uh, use the default settings, and I'll just make the text a little bit bigger. But as you can see, I don't really need to do this, but like I said, you can see that the um, data is in the format that it was in the original, except with this extra row for Mike. Well, I think I made these bold before, but it doesn't really matter. So yeah, that is pretty much that. So I'll leave it there, and thank you for watching and come back for part two to um, learn how to export um, a database to a CSV file because there's a little bit of extra sort of trickiness involved for the column headings but um, we'll, do, we'll do that in the next part. Okay, so thank you for watching and come back for part two.